Welcome to my channel. Today's video is all about what happens to your body when you quit smoking. I've seen many people ask what will happen to their body and their mood during this withdrawal period to the point where they are actually done with smoking. I'll walk you through a timeline of everything that happens from the moment you put out your last cigarette to where you are smoking and craving free. But first, let's look at what happens while you smoke too. So let's go. Our bodies are amazing biological machines. That's for lack of a better word. Around 20 minutes after you smoked your last cigarette, your body already starts repairing itself from the harm and the damage that you caused to it. Sorry, but that sounds harsh, but that is what you did. So why is it so difficult to quit? We all say nicotine is addictive, but your brain develops extra nicotine receptors when you inhale the smoke from a cigarette. Then, of course, you inhale that nicotine. Now, your body is used to the nicotine and the continuously will continuously crave for more. And that craving is your body telling you it wants more and more. Before we continue, if you find the content useful, please like and subscribe and just ring that little bell. It will help my channel greatly and it will allow more people to learn how to quit smoking. Now let's get back to our video. Um, suddenly you decide to quit and what happens then is your brain, which is used to that amount of nicotine, is sending these signals that we interpret as cravings. Now you might ask, is this going to continue forever? Will I just suffer from this constant craving for the rest of my life? And the answer is no. Luckily your brain is so adaptive. It will rewire itself over time. Those receptors we mentioned that were added will disappear in a few weeks. That's amazing, isn't it? So, uh, we talked about nicotine and cravings. Now let's look at your heart and your cardiovascular system next. Your heart and your cardiovascular system are at attacked in many ways when you smoke. For instance, it raises your blood pressure and it puts a lot of stress on your heart. If this continues, your heart will get weakened and it won't be as effective as it was. Your blood also becomes thicker and sticky over time, and that causes even more stress on your heart as it struggles to pump it through your body. I am not trying to scare you, but that's why you have a higher risk of developing blood clots and not only in your legs, but also in your lungs and your heart and even your brain. And to add to this crazy mix, damage to your blood vessels and guess what? You are highly at risk for a stroke or a heart attack. As I say, there's more. It increases your unhealthy cholesterol that builds up as plaque on, on the artery walls. So when you quit, many of the side effects of smoking are reversed. Yes, your blood pressure starts returning to normal and shortly after quitting and your, your heart rate will, will normalize. Did you know that within only 24 hours after quitting, your risk of a heart attack decreases dramatically as your blood thins with less chance of forming clots? Your heart can also relax as it doesn't have to work as hard and to circulate your blood. Now, as I said, your body is a fantastic machine protecting you as best as it can, even though we do so much harm to it. Now, let's look at your lungs. Whether you like it or not, as you puff away, your smoking causes your lungs to get inflamed. And this inflammation makes you feel uncomfortable in your chest area. I'm sure you know what I mean. That tightness, that wheezing sound when you breathe. You are gasping for air after just climbing five stairs. And as the inflammation gets worse, more permanent scar tissue is formed. Along with other changes, it will 
make your breathing more and more difficult over time. Now there is a lot more to say about the damage done to the lungs by smoking, but we all know emphysema can even lead to, to, to death. And I'm not mentioning even lung cancer. So let's say we will leave it there for now regarding your lungs, as we don't aim to scare you, but rather inform you of what is happening. So when you finally quit smoking, just know emphysema is, is incurable. The sooner you quit, the better. Rather quit now before too much damage occurs. The good news is within two weeks of quitting, you should notice that your breathing has improved tremendously. You will see how good it feels to breathe more freely. Did I mention that you will also get better at fending off any uh, infections and those terrible colds? Let's talk about cancer. Did you know that one third of cancer deaths are due to smoking? or should I say tobacco. Uh, what happens is your DNA gets damaged by smoking, which causes the cells to grow irregularly, and that could turn into cancerous cells. Now, let's keep this information as light as possible, as I'm sure you know about all the effects cancer has on the patient and everybody, all your loved ones and the friends. The list just goes on. And... As usual, your body steps up to the plate the moment you quit as it starts healing your DNA and it will, it will try to repair the damage it has caused already. There is no better way to lower your cancer risk than quitting smoking. Have you seen people that have smoked for many years? What their skin looks like? Non-smoker skin is very elastic and it looks healthy but smoking causes your skin to lose its elasticity and it becomes very dry and it loses its color. And as you've guessed, when you quit smoking, you put a stop to this skin damage. Now, smokers also have a higher risk of type 2 diabetes. And smokers with type 2 diabetes struggle to control their blood sugar levels. This makes you much more vulnerable to all the complications of type 2 diabetes like kidney failure, blindness and heart disease and that list just goes on. So when you quit smoking, everything changes. If you already suffer from type 2 diabetes, it will be easier for you to control. Others have a lower risk of diabetes and just that's just plain and simple, it's it's easy fact. What about your hormones? Smoking causes your estrogen levels to drop and you will notice your hair thinning out as well as memory loss that's creeping in. Women will also find it more challenging to get pregnant which can negatively impact a baby's health as well. And some experience menopause a lot earlier than non-smokers. And the usual impact on your health as we've already mentioned. Men don't get a free pass either as they have a higher risk of ED and damaged sperm and may even become infertile or cause ge genetic defects in their babies. So when you quit, just the opposite, opposite happens for men and women. So for, for example, the chance of having a baby improves and men's chances of a healthy sexual life improve as the risk of ED lowers. Your immune system also benefits a lot when you quit smoking. Slowly but surely it will become stronger and you will be less at risk from all kinds of illness. Uh, many people don't even think smoking negatively impacts your bones and your muscles. So when you quit smoking, your muscles get more oxygen, which will help you to get stronger, healthier muscles. And at the same time, your bones will be more resistant to fracturing. I've mentioned many times how your senses improve when you quit smoking, but I didn't say that even your vision, especially your night vision, will improve along with your 
hearing and your taste. Now we've heard, all had these horror stories about smokers that getting ulcers and gum disease and bad breath. So here's one more area where the risk of having trouble with that declines tremendously when you quit. Nothing beats a great smile. So that's it. I've run through many things, but I haven't given you a timeline yet. I'll quickly run through a timeline, but I must mention that all the things I talked about earlier only scratches the surface, but I did try and give you an overall look and at what happens when you quit smoking. Now let's get to that timeline. The first thing is I must mention that not everyone goes through the same timeline. For some people, it, it might be a lot easier, and for others, it it's, might be more difficult. But on average, the timeline is the same. Usually, the biggest issue most people experience is uh, the cravings or being moody and irritable. I also must mention that the first three days are the most difficult and the time most people actually give in. So it is essential to know this so that you can be prepared to face this and not give up as easily. And because remember, the, uh, uh, as time passes, it will only get easier after that. I've mentioned in other videos that your lungs start recovering simply after 20 minutes of smoking your last cigarette, which is obviously terrific, but there's a difficult time ahead. After just four hours or so, your body tells you it needs a cigarette. The nicotine levels in your body have gone down by 90% and you are becoming very irritable. Now is the time to focus on other tasks, to avoid thinking of smoking. Do some chores, call friends and family and tell them what you are up against. Now you are about, let's say, 10 hours in and you feel a bit hungry, most probably due to your lower blood sugar levels. One of the reasons many people start eating a lot more and gain weight if they don't keep an eye on it. Your blood circulation is starting to return to normal, so you might experience some tingling sensations. This is quite normal. Just get ready for bed and make sure that you stay calm and relaxed. It would be a great to listen to something relaxing. I have a powerful meditation on the channel that will help you calm down and relax. Do this or, or something similar and as, as many give in at this time and rather smoke than not sleep. So remember, it will become easier for you and can I say easier and easier as time goes by. So don't feel depressed. Live in the moment and congratulate yourself for staying strong. Now, your first day of being a non-smoker has passed. You might experience a strong urge to smoke when you wake up. Stay strong. Remember all those reasons why you are quitting and know that these cravings will pass. Drink a lot of water or juice, but not coffee. And eat something. No, you might be irritable and anxious or just upset and be, pre be, and be prepared for, for this so that you can take your mind off these feelings and focus on something more constructive and positive. Now, do something completely new. Change your routine so you don't miss smoking. On the second day, 48 hours later, you can start seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. The worst is over. Some people become more anxious or depressed. It is simply your brain that's adapting to the new chemistry happening in your body, in your brain. So remember, your brain was used to loads and loads of nicotine, and now it has to quickly adapt to the new you. Some experience headaches, which will most likely go away within 24 hours. So be prepared. Don't be alarmed when this happens. On top of that, you might experience a few cravings throughout the day. Cravings will last only a few minutes, and there are different ways that you can overcome this. I will post a video of what you can do during this period. 
So remember to subscribe and remember to ring that bell if you haven't done so yet. So you will be notified when I post new videos and also just to help other people find this video and can benefit from it. By now, after the third day, your cravings are becoming less and less. So some heavy smokers might start coughing a lot. This is only their body recovering and getting rid of that tar and growing new tissue. So it is not something to be alarmed about, but rather a good sign that your body is recovering. After the first week, um, up to about the third week of being a non-smoker, those cravings are not as severe and you have learned how to deal with them. Some might even not have any cravings anymore. So don't give in and tell yourself you are okay. One cigarette won't make a difference. Uh, remember, you will be back to square one, so just don't do that. You might also have a better appetite and some might experience an upset stomach due to all that changes that's taking place in your body. Now, you are basically out of the woods, and as they say, but around 70% of smokers will still experience cravings for nicotine and in that increased appetite. Just be aware of it and don't give in to that binge eating and just continue to make healthy choices. Now, for up to four weeks, some people might experience anxiety and difficulty to focus, being irritable, and maybe even depression. So do take care of yourself, and if this continues, the best thing for you to do is to talk to your doctor. Now, there is an easier way to quit, and you may say, why you only mention this right now? If you really want to quit, Click the link below and schedule a free call with me. I help people quit smoking without experiencing those long-term cravings. So just go ahead and schedule that call and let's chat and we'll see if I can help you become smoke-free. Remember that change requires action.